I shall be describing to you regarding International League Against Epilepsy classification of generalized onset seizures which would be total of six varieties. The first one would be rather more common in pediatric age group. Nonetheless, we're going to talk about it. Absent seizures. Hey guys, this is Dr. Marwa and today I'll be talking about one of the oldest recognized condition in medical literature that is epilepsy. The technical definition of this would be more than two episodes of unprovoked seizures and you would be seeing a large number of cases related to this condition in your outpatient department or emergency department. So let us delve deeper into the topic and increase awareness about it in general population. I shall be describing to you regarding International League Against Epilepsy classification of generalized onset seizures which would be total of six varieties. The first one would be rather more common in pediatric age group. Nonetheless, we're going to talk about it. Absent seizures, then is going to be simulation with respect to atonic and myoclonic seizures. And four, five, six are rather the ones that you are more comfortable with. That is clonic seizures, tonic seizures, and a combination of the two, which is the commonest one out of the six that I'm going to show you today. That is generalized tonic clonic seizures. The first simulation that we will discuss is of a patient of absent seizures and I'll be explaining both typical and the atypical variety before you. The highlight of the seizures would be that there is no tonus, there is no clonus and there is no post ictal confusion. The only thing that is present here is vacant staring spells which results in parents to call him as a daydreamer. In fact, the only hint initially is presence of declining school performance and failing grades. So what I'm going to do in this case is make this child hyperventilate for three minutes. Now, since I've been doing hyperventilation for a substantial long duration, you will notice that hyperventilation can trigger development of automatisms. The commonest automatism that is seen is the facial one with repeated blinking of the eyes and these episodes may occur in short bursts of 20 seconds and will occur multiple times on a daily basis and therefore we need to go in for EEG for diagnosis of this condition. When it comes to the EEG of these patients, the traditional finding that we always read is 3 per second spike and slow wave pattern. But if you look at the EEG flashing on the screen, you will notice that you are able to see only two or approximately two and a half waves every second. So this feature of 2.5 hertz spike and slow wave pattern is a feature seen with atypical absent seizures. In contrast, the subsequent EEG that I've shown you is the classical one, which is three per second spike and slow wave pattern, which is seen in the typical variety of absent seizures. In fact, in the atypical variety, you might be having presence of post ictal confusion, but in typical absent seizure, there is no post ictal confusion. The second simulation that I'm gonna to show to you is of a patient of atonic seizures. These seizures are also called as drop attacks. In fact, in some cases, there would be a sudden loss of postural tone that will result in falls and injuries. Like you can notice this particular student who was studying had a sudden nodding of the head, which is friends might actually find very funny. But the point is, if there is a sudden slumping of the body forwards, there's a sudden nodding of the head, it might actually bang against the table. So you might have to prescribe these patients to wear a full time helmet. Consciousness in these patients is regained on falling. Remember in absence seizure per se, there's no post ictal deficit, there's no post ictal confusion, but atonic seizures, the patient can definitely have loss of consciousness though the duration can vary. And a large number of these cases might be associated with myoclonic seizures and GTCS as well. Therefore, for diagnosis of this condition, you will not only be doing a EEG showing an electro decremental response, but if you do a EMG in these patients, you will notice that in sternocleidomastoid, there would be a sudden decrease of tone, which can explain the head nodding movement that occurred. And this would be followed by a fall. And as I explained, I mean, head injuries are very common in patients of atonic seizures. The next simulation that I'm showing you is of a patient of myoclonus. It might actually be misdiagnosed as clumsiness and may cause recurrent spilling of food either over the table or maybe over the clothes of the patient. In fact, the technical definition of the word myoclonus is brief arrhythmic jerky movements that last for less than one second and might actually cluster over a couple of minutes. But this causes significant distress in these patients. You will notice that in these patients, there might be simultaneous jerky movements of the face as well as that of the hands. 
Now why that is so is because area 4 of the brain, the cortical representation for the facial musculature and the hand musculature is close together. The procedural choice for diagnosis of this condition will be a sleep deprived EEG and the EEG findings would be standard 4 to 6 hertz polyspike slow wave discharges that would be lasting for approximately 1 to 20 seconds. The next simulation that we'll be discussing is very interesting and is called focal seizures with intact awareness. In this case, the clonic discharges in the sensory motor cortex may cause jerky movements that might start in the thumb, move on to the index finger, then move on to the wrist joint, maybe then move on to the elbow joint of the patient. The classical Jacksonian march that occurs in patients of focal seizures and you are noticing that the patient is not becoming unconscious at this particular point of time. This patient is having this problem primarily because there is an abnormal focus which is operating in the right primary motor cortex which is causing involuntary movements on the left hand side and once the episode will occur the patient will be having weakness in the hand which is called as Todd's paresis. Lots of time these patients might actually be having a sensation of deja vu, they might be having micropsia, macropsia or even the smell of burning rubber or kerosene oil which is called as aura. The next simulation that we're going to discuss is even more interesting and is called focal seizures with impaired awareness. In this case, you will notice that our subject will be having a transient impairment to maintain contact with the environment. The patient will look lost. He will be unable to respond to visual or verbal commands and you definitely can notice the fidgetiness. Notice the left hand of the patient where he is doing picking movements on his clothes. With the right hand you can notice that he is holding a cold drink but there is a definite fidgetiness that might be noticed. In fact in some patients you might actually notice chewing movements, you might be noticing lips packing movements and deficits like aphasia might come like we deliberately made an auto rickshaw driver slow down near this guy and ask him where would he like to go and the patient was unresponsive at this particular point of time. Most of these patients when they recover from this they will definitely call this a surreal experience. So let's look at what this patient has to say. Well it was quite a surreal experience for me because I was lost. I was looking for a location earlier and then out of sudden I didn't know what to do. I was not able to respond to the situation and this thing happens quite often with me. We shall now be describing the most important and the commonest type of seizure that you see in clinical practice that is GTCS generalized tonic-clonic seizure and this may occur abruptly but lots of time you will notice that there might be a prodrome present but there is no aura. I mean this patient is not going to tell you that doctor I can smell kerosene or burning kerosene or burning rubber per se as we discussed with respect to focal seizures without loss of awareness and then would be a development of the tonic phase. In the tonic phase, once the body becomes stiff, the muscles of expiration will produce a loud moan or ictal cry. At this moment, because of the impaired respiration and pooling of secretions, there would be a cyanosis developing in the patient. There would be a deathly blue color around the lips of the patient. And once clonus occurs in the patient, you will notice that howsoever physically strong you are, you will not be able to restrain the violent movements of the body of the patient. You can control tremors with your muscle power but you cannot control clonus with your muscle power the repetitive movements will continue for approximately a minute and gradually will cease down when the clonus phase is occurring right before your eyes inside the casualty in the emergency room you definitely have to put an IV line I mean you're not gonna wait for one minute for the convulsion phase or the clonus phase to get over and then you will put an IV line but if you are outside the hospital then obviously I mean trying to put up an IV line will not be possible in those circumstances you will just have to manage the patient in the sense that you have to secure the airway and most of the time you will notice that this patient will definitely develop a post deficit and even when the person will awaken after the end of an episode he might ask you questions like where am I or who brought me here or I was standing at the bus stop and uh, and thus then I, I really don't know and doctor can I borrow your cell phone and can I make just a call because he is bewildered by the fact that how has he suddenly landed up in the hospital so when it comes to GTCS in a patient you will always always notice there is a presence of a post ictal deficit and there would be confusion disorientation in the patient as he regains consciousness but in the first one that I showed before you that is absence seizures there is total absence of post ictal deficit per se hi guys thank you so much for your patience and hearing me out and i'll be back with another topic very soon mm -hmm.